Well, hello, I'm David, and it's time for some daily bread. In our study of the book of Philippians in our Sunday Bible class, uh, there was a thought that, that really caught my attention from verse 19 of chapter 1 when Paul writes that, I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Paul was in prison, but he was expecting to be delivered from that circumstances. And he says that there are two things that are going to help that to come about. One is your prayers, the, the prayers of the church at Philippi for me, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to I want to concentrate on Paul's thoughts about the prayers of the Philippians for him. He was really counting on that, and he felt like it was going to be very influential in his outcome. You know, it turns out that Paul... Uh, this was not an unusual thing for Paul. As a matter of fact, he expresses that very same kind of sentiment to other Christians about other circumstances. Listen to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 10. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope that He will deliver us again. You also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted to us through the prayers of many. Paul saw the prayers of the Corinthians, the prayers of many, as being very influential in the things that were happening in his life. He also says this same kind of thing in Romans chapter 15, where he, in verse, uh, verse 20, encourages those Christians to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from unbelievers in Judea. He believed in the prayers of Christians for him. When he wrote his letter to Philemon about Onesimus, uh, he, he says to Philemon in verse 22, I'm hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. I mean, it's time and again. Paul believes that the prayers of Christians are powerful and that the prayers of Christians on behalf of him have a great impact on what happens to him. So I think that should tell us some things about our praying I think it should tell us that, that the prayers, it's, it's no small thing when someone says, I am praying for you. That's a powerful thing. And we need to look at that and recognize that as a powerful thing to be encouraged and strengthened by it. I think there is certainly nothing wrong with doing exactly what Paul did oftentimes, and that was to solicit the prayers of others on his behalf. He wanted people praying for him because he knew that the power that power uh, came from that. Another thing that that I think we should think about here is that you know wherever we are in our lives spiritually, whatever we may have accomplished, whatever good may have been done, uh, whatever progress we have made, it, it's a reminder to us that we did not get here by ourselves. Yes, we may have worked hard, we may have overcome some hardships and difficulties, and we may have been through struggles and all kinds of things. But if there have been people praying for us, we need to acknowledge and recognize that it is by the prayers of others, among other things, that have helped us to get where we are. And that should, should cause within us a tremendous sense a, debt, a feeling of debt of gratitude and a sense of appreciation for the prayers that people have made for us. You know, sometimes we, we sing a song that suggests to us that sh we should pray in the morning, pray in the evening, pray at the noontime, pray all the time. And as we pray, let us be praying for others and let us be thankful when others pray for us.